Is post finasteride syndrome real? Or is it just a bunch of hypochondriacs? Well, the answer is yes, it is very real. And it's something that's been established in the most formal avenues, the FDA, the courts, the peer reviewed literature and health regulators all over the world. Merck, the makers of the drug, state so themselves in the package insert. So if you're using Propecia, rather than take my word for it, you can just read it for yourself. Listed among the side effects, you will find, quote, decrease in sex drive that continued after stopping the medication. Problems with ejaculation that continued after stopping the medication. Difficulty in achieving an erection that continued after stopping the medication. These are all descriptions of post finasteride syndrome. And they were all added to the patient information sheet after the FDA compelled Merck to do so in 2012. The FDA did this after reviewing over 400 patient reports. Many of these cases involved severe depression and suicidal thoughts as a result of these side effects. As Reuters reported, prior to this major change, Merck had made a subtler change in 2002. Referring to the side effects, the patient information sheet initially said, resolution occurred in all men who discontinued therapy with Propecia. In the updated 2002 version, the word all was removed. In other words, Merck was in possession of data that suggested life-changing damage way before the FDA made them update the label. And we know this as a result of multi-district litigation from over 1,000 men who took Merck to court in 2012. A multi-district litigation is a legal mechanism similar to a class action lawsuit. In 2018, Merck paid over $4 million to settle these lawsuits. And in 2021, after a long legal process between Reuters and Merck, a judge finally unsealed numerous internal Merck documents. These had been submitted to the courts over the course of the multi-district litigation. According to Reuters, one of the unsealed documents was a 2009 internal risk management report which showed the company was aware of persistent symptoms that might lead to suicidal thoughts. This is not something that is limited to the US as well. Already in 2008, the Swedish Medical Products Agency mandated that Merck add persistent sexual dysfunction on the product label. This was four years before the FDA took a similar step. This opened the floodgates and as of today, at least 54 countries around the world have issued similar warnings. So what exactly is post finasteride syndrome or PFS? First of all, why do we even call it a syndrome and not a disease? A syndrome refers to a constellation of symptoms that often cluster together. They tend to show up at the same time, the cause is not clear, and there is typically no cure. In all these ways, a syndrome differs from a disease. Because a disease generally has a known cause and mechanism of action and a generally accepted treatment. Now, the problem with many public discussions on PFS is that they tend to focus on sexual side effects and those are indeed one of the syndrome's core symptoms. According to one survey, over 90% of PFS sufferers reported reduced sexual drive and 63% complete loss of sex drive. Intermittent erectile dysfunction is reported by 83% and complete impotence by 40%. But it does go way beyond just sexual dysfunction. There are also very real and extensive physical changes. Around 50% report muscle atrophy, increased fat deposition, and muscle twitching. Lethargy and gynecomastia are reported by about 70%. Shrinkage of the penis and scrotum are also common. We also have major neuropsychological and psychiatric problems, the most prominent one being brain fog and inability to think clearly. This is reported by about three out of the four respondents, similar to problems with attention and memory. Around 70% report increased anxiety and depression, while 63% have suicidal thoughts. 73% report a complete loss of pleasure in life, so-called anhedonia. So we are basically talking about complete collapse in normal functioning. Many of these men are unable to have intimate relationships, 
hold a job or pursue the hobbies and activities they previously found enjoyable. Life as they knew it is over and instead of things becoming better, they often only become worse. So let's have a look. Melissa Hippolyte introduces us to a man who says one popular hair loss drug destroyed his body and not just while he took it, even after he stopped. That no. was you. That was me. On the outside looking in. I think people like my class. That's how Matthew Dershowitz sees his life these days. Yeah, I used to make people do push-ups. Up until a month ago, the 35-year-old taught fitness classes here at the Gold's Gym in Arlington, worked as a teacher in an area hospital, and had a successful tutoring business. And I was running around town and, and loving life. It all started about one year ago. Dershowitz woke up one day feeling lethargic and extremely anxious. He also lost his sex drive. And we're talking about a total system shutdown. He couldn't figure out what was wrong. That's until he says he went online and searched for information about a drug he'd been taking for more than 10 years. Yeah, I mean, my heart sank. Dershowitz started taking the hair loss drug Propecia when a dermatologist told him he was losing hair. When I was 23 years old, which 23-year-old wants to lose their hair? He says his doctor recommended it. We talked about side effects, and uh, and she assured me it was very safe, and like all drugs, you could stop it, and, and at any time, you'd be okay. But Dershowitz says he has not been okay. He says he stopped taking the drug in December of last year, hoping his symptoms would go away. But in fact, he says, they only got worse. My arms which used to be pumping out of my, my shirt. My, my, my body is completely atrophied. I lost 20 pounds in, uh, in just over three months. This email shows a neurologist in New York City diagnosed Dershowitz with post finasteride syndrome. Another patient from Germany voluntarily released his medical records. In them, we find this description from his treating physician. The patient took finasteride for three months in 2015, loss of libido, erectile dysfunction, orgasm disorders, feels that his body changes, more fat, less muscle, unfocused fear and anxiety, feels depressed and can't stop thinking about his problems. Sodafinil, Viagra helped with erectile dysfunction. Patient fears that his penis would vanish, sometimes no feeling of the presence of his organ, no relationship at this time, no wish for paternity. What is the cause of the syndrome? In other words, how long after taking finasteride can you expect the symptoms to start and how are they affected when you stop taking it? Unfortunately, there is no one answer to these questions. There are dramatic differences from one man to the next, which reinforces the possibility we are dealing with different phenomena that we are very simplistically lumping under one category. Some men take finasteride for months or years before they notice the first symptoms. They come off finasteride and instead of getting better, the symptoms get worse. Others will get persistent side effects after a few days or even after a single pill. And then there's many guys who take finasteride for however long, days, months or years, and don't experience any side effects whatsoever. They come off it and that's when the symptoms start. And going back on the drug doesn't do anything to stop them. As a general rule, however, the longer you've been taking finasteride for, the higher your chances of eventually developing PFS. One study calculated that young men who are on finasteride for longer than 205 days have nearly five times higher risk of developing persistent side effects compared to those with shorter exposure. The dosage itself, where it's five milligrams for prostate or one milligram for hair loss, doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. So what about topical finasteride? A very interesting question involves what happens when you apply finasteride topically instead of taking it as a pill. We know from various studies that the incidence of sexual side effects is reduced. For example, a recent study compared topical to oral finasteride over a 24 week period. It found that 2.8% of patients on the topical had sexual side effects compared to 4.8% on the pill. So lower frequency, but still possible. And this is because finasteride applied to the scalp is still absorbed into the bloodstream, though not nearly as much as taking the pill. According to one study, you get about 15 times lower finasteride levels in the blood plasma via the topical compared to the Propecia pill. On the other hand, the reduction in plasma DHT levels is more or less the same. So it seems that even very low levels of finasteride can seriously impact your hormones. When it comes to direct evidence of PFS from topical finasteride, there is nothing in the form of peer-reviewed scientific studies. 
Anecdotally, however, we have data from the PFS Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit established in 2012. Their mission is to raise awareness about PFS, encourage research, and hopefully find an effective treatment. According to them, they have been approached by around 3,000 affected men over the past decade. Of these, 12 told them they developed PFS after topical finasteride. One patient, a 21-year-old student, described how he developed intense groin pains after only one day using topical minoxidil solution fortified with finasteride. He would use it a further three days before stopping. By that point, however, the pain had become so intense that he ended up in hospital. The pain eventually went away, only to be replaced by various sexual and psychological issues like erectile dysfunction, genital shrinkage, insomnia, and anhedonia. He was eventually forced to leave his campus and move back in with his parents. So while extremely rare, PFS from topical finasteride is a possibility. So how do you treat it? Now, the problem is we don't know what causes the syndrome and we don't have an objective way to quantify it. We don't even know if there is one syndrome per se or if we're wrongly lumping people with a different condition into one category. Standard blood tests, including testosterone and DHT, would generally come back as normal. There is no single hormonal or other parameter that's conspicuously out of range. All the tests would generally come back normal and the patient is still complaining that there's something terribly wrong. So for this reason, the reaction of many physicians is just to brush away the whole thing. Say that, hey, you're just managing this and you're stressed, you're anxious or whatever. Here's an antidepressant or you can so the most common experience of these guys is going around from one doctor to the next without much success. According to a survey, 38% of men turn to a urologist after developing symptoms and the remaining 62% went to a primary care or internal medicine provider. The men report that the most common reaction of the doctors was to attribute the symptoms to psychological causes. In almost 70% of cases, the patients were referred to a psychiatrist. Sooner or later, most of these men will give up mainstream medical doctors and seek some complementary or alternative treatments. This will be in the form of supplements to support various aspects of psychological and physical function, as well as lifestyle changes, especially in diet or physical activity. The problem is that because PFS is such a crippling and wide-ranging condition, it makes it very difficult to establish a healthy lifestyle in the first place. So how are you gonna lift yourself out of depression when you don't have a job or a girlfriend? How are you gonna exercise when you feel weak or fatigued or can't sleep well when you're in constant pain? In summary, post finasteride syndrome is a recognized condition acknowledged by the FDA courts, peer-reviewed literature, and the global health regulators. Merck, the manufacturer, lists persistent sexual side effects on Propecia's label added after the FDA mandates in 2012 following numerous patient reports. PFS encompasses a range of symptoms, including sexual dysfunction, physical changes, and severe neuropsychological issues like depression and suicidal thoughts. These symptoms can be debilitating and severely affect the quality of life. The cause is unclear as it persists long after finasteride has been metabolized out of the system. Treatment remains challenging due to the lack of clear diagnostic markers and often the dismissive attitude of healthcare providers. These two factors combined lead to many patients to seek alternative therapies and lifestyle changes. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you had a long-term side effect from finasteride and also let me know what topic you want me to cover next. If you're looking for a non-finasteride hair loss treatment, you can head over to hairguard.com. We've got the best hair loss products in the world. Okay guys, see you in the next video.